Hey. How's it going? Good. Good, good. good. Flying in from, from go-kart racing again. So fine, yeah. And I what uh are you not concerned about your carbon footprint, Kelly? <laughs> no. God no. I don't believe in climate change, Kyle. Good. Yeah, my truck's That's running hilarious. all the time. Just in case I need to make a getaway. <laughs> conspiracy theory but good try oh. not not today yeah, that's a different podcast <laughs> hats with Kyle and Kelly. hey i'm just looking forward to another week of interrupting kelly every time she tries to get a thought across that's, that's my right. job here hell yeah speaking of math to- i'm used to it oh. kelly what are you drinking is it a cooler Woo! yeah as i almost drop it uh it is okay so Ooh, I, see I thought about being classy and having wine and then this matched my sweatshirt and i'm like that's got to be a sign right yeah. yeah i mean there's no i took it as one kismet you can't can't fight nature no no so i took it as a sign and went with cheerleader beer so Corey, what do you got Every time I think I've one up Kelly, she just brings it every single time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got a, a, a local classic. It, this is the redneck margarita. It is tequila with fresca. <laughs> That's wonderful. Hey, that sounds pretty good. It's delicious, but it's the redneck margarita. Yeah. I'm going to two up you guys by drinking a glass of rosé with ice cubes. Like it. Rosé all day. Rosé. Well, I'm wearing a... Call me old fashioned shirt. <laughs> you, uh, old fashioned. If you got it from a box, you get extra points. If you opened it with uh, a cork or a, a screw top, extra points. Grab one thing. If you had to get it with a corkscrew, you get no points for being classless. Uh, it has a screw off top. I opened it Once. the other day for my neighbor who promptly put it down and said, Kyle, this is terrible. I want something else. <laughs> Solid. Okay. That's solid. And here we are. Um, in honor of Kelly's choice of drinks tonight, you want to start with breezers or pants, since we already have a breezer? Okay. Uh, that one's been done to death. Um, are we the, talking Cooperalls or are we talking uh, straight up breezers? Regular hockey pants. Oh. Mm. If, you're, if you had me at Cooperalls, I would have said, let's bring back the Cooperalls. <laughs> yeah, I, I can get behind that. I... Uh, I was a Cooper all wear. I tucked them into my skates and then taped around it. It was a good look. Well, now they've got the breezer covers. So like, it doesn't matter what color your breezers are because now they do the fancy breezer. I've seen the, the teams where they put the breezer covers on. No, that's, uh, that's extra bougie. I got, I, I had a great, I had a great breezer cover story for you. If you guys don't mind. <laughs> So, yeah, I just like to throw out there that I am going to have to fix that and post by putting um, closed captions at the bottom. Every time you guys say breezer, I'll have to just flash pants on the screen. <laughs> people understand what we're saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I'm just going to keep pushing through this and expect that everyone knows we're talking about breezers. Okay. It's not a naming convention. When you're referring to pants, you're talking about Cooperalls. So it's, it's, not a North, it's not a North Dakota, Canada thing. So we, we've got. I've, I've been told we need to stop making fun of Canada, and I told those people no, 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 <laughs> never. never. So I, I not being a a, uh, a well experienced hockey parent, had a son who participated in, in an extra team, and he was given a pair of breezer covers. And I looked at these things for a very long time and could not figure out how they worked. <laughs> uh, and you wouldn't think the concept of a cover for your breezers would be that difficult. Well, it turns out the guy had given uh, my son, who's a defenseman, goalie breezer covers, Oh, which to my great consternation was finally explained to me why these wouldn't fit over and work with regular breezers. But I had no idea. <laughs> I have not encountered them myself yet either. Think of how many shots he could have blocked with those. <laughs> it could have been awesome. Corey, you know, well. Go ahead, Kyle. That might have been our longest cold open ever at four minutes. We put a nice of Corey and Kelly here with us. I'm Kyle. Welcome to episode three. We do not have a guest tonight, so you are treated to the three of us ad infinitum until we run out of things to say, or I run out of space to save the recording, whichever comes first. Whichever comes first. Yeah. Uh, NHL draft is going on tonight. Corey, I'd like your thoughts on the Coyotes pick at six overall. It's sixth overall. 
I think they're going to take a high upside guy. <laughs> Just kidding. They already made the pick and nobody knows who it is. Yeah, <laughs> Oh, what, one of the things I actually did want to Russian? talk about. Oh, go ahead, Corey. Was the pick Russian? Yes. See, you said no one knows him. I just figured he was Russian. Yeah. Um, to date myself a little bit, uh, and that would be my choice if I was dating myself, um, going back many, many years, I used to be obsessed with the draft because Edmonton was never in the playoffs, so I had to look forward to something. Uh, they drafted a young, I think, well, Russian or Ukrainian fella by the name of Alexei Miknov. And on the screen uh, on television, they just had his name. They Nobody knew where he played. It was just a mystery pick at pretty high, about 13th overall. So I always uh, use that as the um, the measuring stick for all random draft picks. But that's, uh, that's getting a little too obscure for the purpose of this podcast. <laughs> so I will dial it back. Well, Russia goes sixth and seventh overall. I just pulled up the tracker. And, you know, Dmitry Sim Simashev, defenseman from Russia for number yeah. six and number seven, Mate. Oh, wow, I'm going to destroy this. Matve Mikov? Yeah, he was supposed to go high, maybe top three, but he fell to the Flyers at seven. That big, you know, Kyle, if we're going to talk about draft and me knowing so much about it, how about uh, Carlson getting selected over Fantilli? number two that one uh was sort of telegraphed in the last few days they thought fantilli might might slip as far as four but bit of a surprise i always like to scroll good. down to look at who the wild drafted and how poorly they screwed this up so that, that's looks about <laughs> right okay. I, his literal name is oliver bonk i mean bonk well, that punk was a good pick. It's I not, think you're not starting with a lot. Yeah, number two overall in the early 90s. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to discuss the draft is the uh, University of North Dakota has several incoming recruits that are up for the draft. Um, some might go relatively high, you know, second or third round. I wanted to get your take as college hockey fans and specifically of the local team, fans of the local team. What are your thoughts about having a lot of draft picks on the team, pro or con? And the con I would look at is, are they going to be there for a long time or are they possibly one or two year players? I'll let Kelly go first. I, I keep jumping in too early. See, I don't know because like I'm, I learn more about this all the time. So like, you know, I used to always think like, oh, drafted by that team that's who they're going to play for and as I'm like growing and learning I'm like they're not necessarily so good I always like to see UND on you know the map and I I think that you know they're a team that they have a lot of you know NHL draft picks and so I always I always think it's good but you know it I as I learned that it it's just a draft pick and it doesn't necessarily mean that that player will ever grace that team. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's exciting, but also question mark, you know, cause it, it, uh, it just doesn't really tie them to anything. You know, I mean, it, it just depends on progress and the team still leaves their door really wide open to if that's where they have to go with that. You know, I mean, there's like the obvious ones, like, Guard going to Blackhawks and he will be there. Obviously, they right. were never gonna, you know, would have been a really stupid decision to let him slip through the cracks. But, yes. um, but I do love to hear the UND names come up. Love hearing North Dakota hockey. Um, you know, and it's fun. It's always fun to see kids that you get to watch in person, right, coming up in the NHL draft. So, and I think that's the big positive. Is it really obviously gives some cachet to the team. Um, the NCHC is obviously you know, deep, deep in draft picks. Um, and I think the reality of college hockey post um, transfer portal is you may not keep guys for the four or five years anyway. So you might as well have the highest caliber of player in that you can. Um, I think there are some teams that will, will recruit guys. They know they can keep. It's almost like going to the dance and passing on the nine. Cause you know, the six will stick with you for the night type of thing. And I think that's uh I think it's a bad way to build a team. Well, and I, I want to answer your question, Kyle, with a question. <laughs> how, how do we, I'm going to skip right past that one. <laughs> how do we, uh, how do we feel about drafting players that are 14, 15, not drafting, getting letters of intent 
and signing players that are 14, 15, 16. You, you've got a unique background on player development. It, it's got, if we're reaching out at earlier and earlier ages to players who are on those marks at 14, 15, 16, how do you know what kind of player you're going to have at 18, 19, and 20? That, right. And that, that's the, the big issue. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, it's been pushed, uh, pushed a little later in, you know, in, into players junior years. Um, but, but you, you don't, right. There's a bit of a leap and leap of faith involved. Um, you always hear the narratives from some coaches kind of bemoaning it, but once one guy does it, then everybody's either has to do it or, or just accept that you're not going to keep up with the Joneses as a word. Now, you know, some teams don't do it anyways. They wait till guys are, 20 in their last year of junior. So you have a, a bit more of an idea of what you're going to get. Um, but that's just sort of the reality of, of the bargaining chips that go on between, you know, Canadian major junior and college hockey. You kind of have to get to them early because other people are doing it and there's no real good way around it. But if you take hockey out of the equation and you go to a, you know, a young guy at, at well, just use 15, for example, Hey, what do you want to, where do you want to go to college and what do you want to study in five years? assuming they're going to play junior for a couple of years anyways. And you're not going to get a real good answer out of nine out of 10 kids, I'd say. Well, my, my fear is we're always, we're, we're by drafting these kind of players, right? They're one, two and gone, one, two and three gone. We, we start to develop teams that look more like Don Lucia's uh, gophers of the past, right? They brought in unbelievable talent, but they could never build those the grinders weren't there. The guys who were going to stay for five years, who were going to get signed as independents uh, uh, by an NHL team, they just they had all this talent and they seemed to not play with each other. And Minnesota underperformed for seasons. Right. Yeah. And I think you see that maybe a little bit with Michigan right now too. All these hot, you know, a lot of first rounders, but really hasn't translated into a. You know, they've been very very good teams, just hasn't translated into playoff success for them. Of course, in in the NCAA, in in a in a one game playoff, th things happen. But it, it's a good point. It doesn't doesn't always lead to you know having all the high draft picks. Doesn't it's not always a guarantee of success. Well, I, just to plug a, a friendly plug to another good hockey podcast, the Hockey Think Tank. Uh, I blame that on Topher Scott now doing some side coaching for uh, M Michigan. But uh, right, fr friendly plug, great podcast. Very nice guy as well. Have you met him? Oh, yeah. Okay. You used to watch games with him in Richfield. Uh, he is friends with Tony Gasparini, who is now okay. the GM of the Sioux Falls Stampede. So I would sit with them. That was a uh, longtime bingo player with Tony's dad, Gino. Is he as short in real life as he says on his podcast? <laughs> he sounds short. <laughs> Kelly, that's a very cheerleader thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Is he as short as he sounds? Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah. other thoughts on the draft? We're very late yeah. on the Dakota connections other than Zach Nairing, who's likely a third or fourth rounder out of Minot. Yeah, that's a great story. I love that. I love yeah. to see, especially, you know, I, not just UND players, but North Dakota hockey players, yeah. you know, that's, it's always, um, cause you know, UND is great for North Dakota, but they don't always have a ton of hometown kids. So I love to see a kid from Minot and, uh, you know, he, I'm not very surprised just because what he did at Shattuck, he, you know, that he's obviously a, a great talent, but love to see North Dakota kids getting attention in, in any capacity like that. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Ni nice to see. And, you know, Corey, you mentioned the player development before. One of the issues I run into on, on that side of things is, um, you know, mentioning North Dakota kids outside of North Dakota and, and then trying to politely listen to the snicker and say, no, no, they're good. You have to, <laughs> you just need to, you got to give them a bit of a chance here. So it, it is nice to see them uh, get some attention on a, on a wider stage. Well, I, you, you know, you bring that up. We, we've seen already players from North Dakota and more than one move to sistering cities and players at, at my older boys age who've gone from Fargo to Moorhead and players that have gone from Grand Forks to East Grand Forks to get that, higher exposure of Minnesota and they play against those teams as they work into high school. Where we here in North Dakota in our in our phantom level, we're playing the elite teams in Minnesota. But once we get into high school hockey, we don't see those teams. And so that exposure isn't as good. 
Right. I, you know, I just found a, um, a program on my desk here from the Bantam tournament that was hosted in Grand Forks over the winter. Uh, a lot of those names, oh, mostly 08s, have gone on, uh, you know, to national camp. And, and now you're seeing them. If you if you follow that kind of Twitter, you're seeing a lot of the names that played here in Grand Forks mentioned uh, very favorably and in, in different scouting reports. And, you know, the local team, b- both Fargo and, and Grand Forks, the teams that I saw play, did, did very well in, in you know, beat most of them. So um can certainly play with those guys and 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 succeed, but uh face a little bit of um I guess old prejudices based on on an old old perception of North Dakota hockey. Yeah. At the I guess high school and youth level. You can feel free to too by the way it's a fantastic tournament. Uh, yeah it was great very fun to watch works put on tons of the time I think there was something like the five or six of the top 10 ranked teams at that time yeah. uh, that came here and little Grand Forks too. We did really well to, to, you know, yeah. we played some two of the top teams, very close and <laughs> tight games. So I, yeah, I was there. Me. I mean, Fargo <laughs> did well for themselves too. I, was, I watched yeah. them. And Fargo being a very young team, Fargo is yeah, going to be, yeah. up, Fargo in, in North Dakota hockey for Bantams next year is going to be an up and coming team. They've got, they had what I believe was a 50, 50 first year, second year split. And yeah. their first years were impressive. I think they're going to have a heck of a team next year. So a lot of their 08s play at the uh, Fargo Force Camp, and did they held their own against kids much older than themselves? So again, pains me to say it, but well, pains me too. Uh, yeah. The little baseball yeah. guys can play hockey, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to be nice. I'm trying not to talk about the fact that we play West Fargo tomorrow, and their team is 20 and uh, 20 and 0. That's, <laughs> that's just great. Well, yeah. Corey, I'd like to attribute that I would I would bet dollars to donuts that the coaches also wear eye black, and you can't you can't beat that kind of. <laughs> you can't. That's an intensity. Yeah. Funny story for the podcast. Way back when, one of their coaches did wear batting gloves. One being their colors are green and orange, and he was wearing green and orange batting gloves as the base coach. And I believe we've joked about that for quite some time. Just in case. <laughs> Just well, you never know. Just in case. No. Yeah, you never know. Oh Could my be an opportunity. Goodness. That's fantastic. Uh, well, I tell you, makes that's me wish good. makes me wish hockey coaches dressed in full gear. <laughs> but yeah, put some on, you know, helmet and visor. I've yeah. got to wear a full uniform when I coach baseball. Right. Why don't hockey coaches have to wear? Why do they get to wear suits? Yeah, it's it's a it's a legitimate question. I don't know. Even the jersey. Like to see it. Our jersey, just slip on our jersey. Yeah, get a little tuck in there. A sweater, yeah. a hockey sweater with a, the tie underneath. I think that'd be yeah. very classy. Yeah. It's all about the track suits now. Yeah. You know, yeah. you see a lot of track suits. Team, teams are getting flashier. Yep. So, when, oh, go ahead, oh, no, go ahead. I just had an anecdote about uh, flashy hockey sweaters. I, I thought you were going somewhere <laughs> else with flashy right away. But moving on, uh, when when we do have a uh, friend of the podcast, uh, Matt Moreland, on, I do expect him to be wearing a tie with a uh, hockey jersey open top. I just want you guys. And Burks. And Burks. I was going to yeah. say, the Burks will be there for sure. Yeah. The Burks I, are, they're just part of it. But yeah. I, I expect a full body camera from a distance, like uh, in League of Their Own, Marla Hooch. <laughs> What a hitter. We were just talking about Marla Hooch the other day. And Marla Hooch. What a hitter. Uh, I'll quickly tell my Jersey anecdote and then move on. Uh, When I was in college, I had a roommate, a kid I went to high school with, a little older than me, uh, came home from school one day, really a nice kid, just kind of marched to the beat of his own drum. And uh, he's kind of walking around the apartment. He's got jeans on he just had a shower wearing a hockey jersey tucked into the jeans and a big chain with an eagle on it. i'm like hey where are you going he goes get this i got a date i'm like okay you're not leaving the house we got into a bit of a uh, roommate battle about what he was going to wear to the date i lost he did in fact wear the jersey out of the house you know, I mean, when you feel good, if you look good, you do good. It, um, you gotta let that leave. Was this in Canada or in the oh, United yeah. States? Canada. Oh, okay, in Canada. That, that, I needed to know that for the context. Yeah. Von Dutch <laughs> hat or no Von Dutch? No, this is pre Von Dutch. 
Okay. I was going to say, they didn't wear Von Dutch when everyone else did, Corey. We've established it's, we're, we're on a 20 year, like, like hold. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of so, that new band, Pearl Jam? <laughs> <laughs> They're wild. Okay. That is a great album. Like, every song's <laughs> awesome. Called 10. Like, this hey, is these 10 good songs. Hot tip. You're going to like it. Yeah. I, uh, I taped one of those songs from the radio today. I got it just right. So it was, it was pretty sick. <laughs> Pretty, pretty sick. Um, we talked yes, briefly, Corey, about West Fargo coaches. Uh, yeah. Did you guys see the story that was circulating about um, a coach in the Twin Cities that was fired after some parent pressure? Uh, hockey oh. coach? Hockey coach, yeah. I did read the entire story. Uh, he was a, a girls coach on a very winning team. What a, what a crazy story. But it's not unsuspecting in the States. Kyle, I want to give, I'll give the details on it. Yeah, so yeah, I like, haven't heard this one yet. So, so the gentleman's name was Larry Olam, uh, oh, wow. Gopher, um, college hockey star, coached the Orono <laughs> girls' um, high school team, led him to a record of something to the effect of 24 4 and 1 or 24 4 and 2. Um, they were, I think, they end up losing in the state tournament at some point, but a uh, big turn that marked a big turnaround for the team. Um, this is a, from a story from Jess Myers from the Rink Live, which is uh, run by one of our our, our friends, Pierre Paul Lamoureux. Um And so the uh, story goes postseason. Some of the parents um, wrote to him and said, "Hey, we just don't think you have what it takes." And he kind of sent a joking resignation back, and and they forced him to accept it. And now, now it. It. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, Totally Pretty crazy that out there. It's really kind of highlight some of the stuff you see um the ensuing battle on um on twitter was you know a lot of people telling their bad stories about this but then you know people trying to tell some stories about good good coaches as well and uh you know my wife has a, a blog called north dakota nice so i thought maybe we should highlight some nice stories uh you know as a group we've been pretty fortunate to have you know pretty uh not only good coaches, but nice coaches uh, with our group as well. So I think it's important to maybe talk about some of the the good guys like Corey that are involved in coaching. Well, other than myself, my kids have been extremely lucky uh, in having great coaches. <laughs> Fortunately, occasionally I coach them in different things, but I, I got to be honest, I've had either people exaggerate far too often or my kids have had exceptional coaching. <laughs> it's just um, for, uh, I actually, so you're, uh, I, I'm going to go into a little more about that story, but not too much about the specifics of his detail, just friend of the podcast, uh, Jason Ulmer, resident Canadian, uh, hockey coach, uh, and Grand Forks youth hockey, uh, skills coach. I don't know. What's his official position? Is it hockey, like director. Hockey, operate, hockey director. Okay. So we were, we were talking about that article a bit and it's, uh, and the pressures of these days in parenting. And to me, the reasons that he was let go with everything wrong with youth sports right now, the, the, the things that the parents cited as problems were, my kid didn't get time on the power play. My kid wasn't getting enough ice time. They were apparently a very winning team. Um, yeah. There yeah. was no allegations of mistreatment. There was nothing specific to anything other than the parents weren't happy with how he played certain players or right, very, their yeah. players. And, and what Jason and I kind of talked about is that it is the universal truth in youth sports. And that is no matter what we all say, we are all uniquely invested in our children's success, right? So we can say that we're not, but when we're watching our kids play, we want the best for them at all times. And it is exceptionally hard for us as humans to take a step back and as a parent watching kids play, say, what's the best for the team right now? And to look at our child through the lens of a coach's eye, and it's ruining youth sports because you can pay someone for an opinion on your child right now. You can pay someone to say, your kid is amazing. Like I, I'll pay you $600 an hour to train this kid. He's amazing because I want that $600. And we just don't have a clear view on the goals. If, if your kid is on the bench, teach him to battle. There may be a circumstance where your kid is getting the raw end of the deal. Yeah, that's because Jimmy down the road got the job over you because his dad knew the other dad. 
Like, yeah. I'm not talking, I mean, this is stuff these kids are going to run into in life. And we're rolling over this because our kid isn't getting to play in a high school game. Is this really what youth sports are coming to? Wow. Well, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Well, I'm, I'm kind thing, of stepping on my soapbox again. Here. No, <laughs> it's, it's perfectly fine. Uh, I just, Kelly, I, I don't mean to speak over you, but Corey, I'd just like to remind you, you were or- warned in episode one to ease up on the very reasonable and well thought out takes on this show. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I'm not, I've only had half of a redneck margarita, not the 12 I intend to have today. <laughs> hey, fair enough. So Kelly, fly off the handle in, in response to Corey. I, I I have to come in in agreement with Corey just because no. I really... No, but I'll go a little more brash because we're turning kids into huge pussies. Um, yeah. And that, I'll say it out loud. I will say it out loud because we kids just don't have the ability to cope in any capacity. And we do where if they don't like it, we'll change it for them. And it's like, well, that it just will only take them so far. You know, I mean, it... it um, you you will hit a you'll age out of the levels where mom and dad know the coach or you know our friends of the cook it just will come to an end at a certain point and i i just i agree you can't um disappointment is part of it it's just part of it it you have to learn how to deal with it and you you just there's only one way to develop thick skin you know it just in and like you said Corey, there are those instances I people have had it where there's a coach that doesn't like you, but you you have to roll with those punches too. You know, I mean, it, it just I I agree. I think that I don't I don't think that I think every generation we more so get to the point where we think we can control every situation our kids walk into, and you just can't. So there are just times where disappointment is going to be part of it, but it. I just, it makes you better. You know, I mean, you have to look at a kid and say, I've, I've done it to my own son where, you know, oh, how come I didn't get asked to play on that team? I said, cause you kind of underperformed the last time you were out there, buddy. You don't have to tear them to pieces. You know, I wanted to still love the game. It's fun. But if it isn't pointed out to you that it was because you underperformed, you're not going to learn to get better and push harder. You know, I, I don't know. I'm, I agree. I, I think parents, I think you should be an advocate for your kid, but you can't be, I mean, Kyle, you're an agent. I can't imagine what you deal with. It's got to be a little difficult. <laughs> it is. It happens at all levels. And I think the the big thing that, you know, Corey, you, you said you have to be, I guess both of you said you have to be an advocate for your kid, but the number one question we get, um, or maybe the one A after how are their grades is how are the parents? So in advocating for your kids, and one of the issues with this high school team we're talking about is the parents were upset the coach wasn't making enough calls to colleges and no oh, that's another piece. What, Thanks, what, you know exactly what they're asking is is just putting a full stop on the recruitment of their kid like that that behavior will just grind it to a halt um and at some point you have to you know while there may be a coach that doesn't like you tell kids all the time especially you get to higher level you deal with it when you're younger because when you get to higher levels will be a coach if you can help them win you're going to play and if not you're you won't. That's as simple as it is because coach is also trying to move up. He may have to go home to a wife who's very, very upset that she's living in Winkler, Manitoba, and she wants to get the hell out of there. She wants to go somewhere nice. He is going to do whatever it takes to For win example. And get the hell out of Winkler, Manitoba. Right? So it's not parental. you got to find a way to help him because he doesn't want to get, you know, get home at one in the morning after watching video and have her go off on him after, you know, three glasses of rosé about why she hates Winkler. I'm sorry, Winkler. I'll pick someone new next time. <laughs> so one of you guys take the irrational side of this argument, right? Let's, uh, can we make a, a, a some sort of a front to justify, like, the, the overzealous parent? Like, I get we want to be advocates for our kids, and I get in certain circumstances, there has to be communication. I actually had a parent confront me, not about my team. He actually was asking about another team that this child played on. And it's a, a varsity team. So, and he was upset because there was a fee that had to be paid to the team, a sizable one. And the player was getting very little playing time. And I mean, very little. And so reasonable parent, but the parent was saying, hey, I, I paid this big fee. The coach took my kid but he's not playing at all. Like out of 
let's just throw a percent out. Three percent of the total game time. It should there be if you take a player and there's a fee associated, should you not take them if you don't intend to play them? I mean, you got to fill rosters. That's a tough yeah. question. That is really tough. But I agree with you. I think that a parent would have a right to to bring that up. You know, I mean, because then I think you are being an advocate because I think you're just bringing up. It's not that you're asking for special treatment for your kid just for being your kid. You're just saying like, hey, can they get just treatment that would be worthy of, you know, anyone asking? Because you're right. I mean, if they're sitting there, they've been their time is being taken up, but they're not growing from it, but they've paid the fees and everything. I think in that case, it's okay to question just because there there are, you know, circumstances. It's just that it it's hard because I think that those parents feel like they can't because then you're coming off as a parent going, you know, well, my kid is upset and that should stop everything, you know, stop, stop the presses. My, my baby is upset, you know, because there's a lot of that too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm lucky. I, I, I coach at the youth levels where we just play everyone pretty much evenly. Pretty much, I would say there's some some gap differential with certain skills of certain players, but it's we try our best to rotate. But those varsity questions get hard, and in the same degree, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these coaches have dealt with so much crap over the years. They'll tell the parents straight out, "I won't talk to you about playing time. Playing time is my decision as a coach." They'll let the players can talk to me about playing time, but I yeah. will not have a parental discussion about playing time. And, and at a certain age, you have to, yeah. that, that has to be the case where you even have to look at your kid and say, I'm sorry, I can't go in there, but you can go in there. So it's going to have to be you. And I think that just garners more respect. I'm not saying that you never, because there, there are some coaches that even when a kid is 18 years old, will still treat him like a child, you know, and mm -hmm. it, to an adult, I suppose, kind of you are, but they're technically an adult. So, but um, I agree with you. I think that you, at, past a certain age, it has to be, your kid has to go in there and, you know, like talk for themselves and be their own advocate. I think the one, uh, just just be a little contrarian too, one of the reasons that parents do push is, and sometimes it works, right? Uh, you see these guys are successful in getting that coach removed. Maybe they'll have a say in who who gets in there. It happens happens all the time. We've seen it in North Dakota. We see it quite a bit in the Twin Cities where it's a little more amplified at, at, at those levels. But again, it works because there's also people that, you know, just like teachers, it's like, well, this guy's going to complain. I'm going to give him a B just so he sh they don't say anything, right? Hey, I'll give him a few shifts just so they don't say anything. So I think that happens as well. So again, it, it, they're not doing it because it's unsuccessful all the time, right? So there, right. there's a amount of people that will get, get their way that way too. So um helps to explain the behavior. If you're getting what you want from, from the bad behavior, then there's no real incentive to stop that bad behavior. Right. Then it'll always happen. But I always, you know, I've, I've seen different parents do it at every age level. I mean, yeah. as little as termites, you see parents, oh, yeah. you know, do, and, and that's kind of sad, but I always kind of feel like I get it. You love your kids, but newsflash, everybody loves their kid. Everybody, yeah. you know, it's like, Nobody, you don't love Not everybody. Yeah, kids right, are okay. right. You know, I mean, it's I do, day of the week I can give or take yeah. by, you know, but everybody loves their kid. So you know, I I that's always kind of the thought that goes through my mind when I see those parents where I think like, I know that you feel your kids feelings are more important, but everybody feels like that about their own kid. Like, so it kind of cancels out. And there, you know, and I think just in a larger sense, there's something about, and I'm sure it's all, all activities pertaining to youth, not just not just sports. You know, I'm sure it happens in spelling bees too. But it really does bring out the worst in some parents too, right? Like you're so so anxious about trying to do what's right, you just like cross over a lot of lines, you know, both internal and external. And and then once the cat's out of the bag, like you see it, I know you guys have seen it too, where not only with coaches but like submarining other parents and kids and you know, slightly dropping comments here and there. So it, again, just has the effect of bringing out some some poor qualities in, in, in some people. So I think it's something you're probably stuck with. I don't think there's a real good way to squash the behavior. Yeah, I, I did like, though, I thought at, it was at one of our parent meetings. I liked Eric Fabian said something and I thought that was well put, was he said, listen, if you have an issue, come and talk to me. I'm not saying I'm going to do everything that you want, but don't bring me problems, bring me solutions. Yeah. And I thought that's a really good way of putting it. 
don't just come to me with problems. If come to me with some solutions as well. That doesn't mean I have to do what you want, but it does mean I'm willing to hear if you are willing to have some solutions. And I thought, well, that's a really reasonable way of putting it instead of just, you know, um, here's my problem and I'd like to get my way. Thanks. (laughs) We'll have Eric on the, uh, on the program before too long too, to kind of talk about stuff like this. Well, you can put that right to him, Kelly. Right. No, I just, I like the way he put it. You know, I mean that um, I thought it was reasonable. I, I do apply in my marriage the, this is how I want it. We're going to do it this way. Thanks. But I don't know that that applies to you talkie. So, um, you know, I'm familiar it, uh, with that. <laughs> it looks very skeptical. Matt's, Matt's, you know, he's yeah. aware it's, uh, yeah. but, yeah. but I can see where feels, that won't exist in youth hockey. So. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like my home. <laughs> <laughs> happy wife, happy life. That's right? very, very true. I, I really stay in this basement. And I will stay out of her way. <laughs> she may let me come into the uh, the bedroom if I'm very quiet. Right. My way in. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. You guys are the I best at un- unintentional segues, Corey. I uh, I oh. felt bad for a, an entire week where you gave me a, a nice setup right on a platter. Yep. I I glossed right over it. So you brought up the concept of youth hockey hotel dates. I'd like you to talk yes. about that a little bit, and then I'm going to ask you follow up questions. You, you're gonna have to. I can go a lot of places with what you just said. It's North Dakota after, after dark, and it's after dark. <laughs> like, if you're talking about, are we talking about like going to War Road, going to certain hotels that may be frequented by certain business professionals? I mean, how far are we taking this guy? Is it with your actual wife, Corey? Oh, okay. So you're talking about with wow. the marriage bonds. Okay, good, good. Yeah. I also was talking about to be certain here. If yeah. the walls could talk at the patch in War Road, oh, you know? <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure the bed, the rooms and the sheets and the walls do. I mean, oh. as uh, Star Lord once said, I bet if you brought a black light painting or black light in here, this place would look like a Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> yeah. Too highbrow. It's, Too highbrow, it's, Corey. Yeah. It's seen yeah. some, some stuff. It's seen some stuff. Yeah. So, okay, Kyle. First of all, you should know that when you have multiple kids, right, anywhere two, three, and they're all in sports, on the rare occasion that you get to see your spouse on a weekend, you very well might be, okay, kids, let's have the oldest one watch the kids in the room. We're going to go hang out with the other parents. And it's a quasi date. Yeah. It's as close as you're going to get to having some actual spouse time. Uh, <laughs> it's a group date. It keeps it safe yeah. for everybody. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it is the same thing my child is doing right now. He is off with a group of boys and girls at somebody's house at a pool having a group date, knowing full well that there are boys who are 14 and girls that are 14. Each of them all kind of like one or the other or particular ones, but it's very safe. You know, it's like the Walmart of dating. It's yeah. safe. Yes. Yep. No commitments. Everybody's no. in the same room. Yep. Yeah. But no commitments. So, okay. Home? What, uh, what is the ideal hotel date for you? And I'll ask Corey and then I'll ask Kelly. Too many jokes that I can't say on this podcast. Do it. Um, no, ideal hotel day. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are we talking? Are we still talking within the group? Or are we talking about? Uh, hey, surprise me. I I don't want to. <laughs> or he's okay. going into distracted children territory. That yeah. is, yeah. we've yeah. all been okay. there. Okay. okay, I'll ask a different question. How long yeah. do you think you can hide from your kids in a hotel during a hockey game? <laughs> I can I, answer that from experience. Not very long. <laughs> I was going to say, I plead the physics. <laughs> Do a lot of talk no, to it. No, that's the, the, the age old, right? If you if you can get your kids to go play, and like unlike my children, who the second he goes off into a pool, everyone starts screaming, your child is bleeding everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't that much time for Irian and his children alone, right? We do. It, there is a saying, it's always Parker. <laughs> it is. He's gonna. He's just gonna bleed. Like yeah. we we were. Oh, there's a, a kid laying on the ice. Is it Parker? Yeah, it's Parker. Parker, isn't it? Yeah, Parker. it's Parker. So we were at a baseball tournament, right? And I'm sitting in the parking lot. Now my wife wasn't with me, but I'm sitting a, across the parking lot in the grass by a golf course. It was quiet. There was four or five other parents there were sitting and enjoying themselves when a child comes out that I did not know saying. Are you Parker's dad? 
<laughs> yes, I am. He's bleeding all over the lobby. Oh. So once again, I go inside and he had run around the pool, lost his balance, slammed his nose into something once again. And he was, they weren't joking. There was blood all over the pool, all over the lobby, and some angry hotel people wondering why I would dare <laughs> let my child play in the pool by himself. By the way, just so we all know, so I don't go to jail. He was old and there was adults in the pool area as well. Yes. But yeah, that's, there is no dates for me anymore. There's just my son bleeding everywhere. Right. I don't think I've answered your question, Kyle. Ideal pool day, any date that I can go on and actually have a conversation with my wife where my son doesn't bleed and interrupt it. There you go. Well, I tell you, Corey, that's three solid minutes of not answering the question and dancing all around everything else that you should have for office. I'm on brand, baby. That's right. <laughs> well played. Well played. Um, one of the... Uh, so nobody wants a bite on this one. One of the other uh, things during episode two we spoke about was talking to um, our guest, Francois Lemay, about uh, you know, goalie parents sitting apart from people mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, Kelly, you're one of the lucky few in this podcast that is a part, a central part, I would say, of Mom Island. What happens in Mom Island? On Mom Island? Uh, there's a lot of talking and not always watching i usually miss my i catch everybody else's kids goals but not usually my own and then i have to lie later where he's like did you see my my goal mom I'm like sure sure did buddy didn't see it and then he'll be like what was your favorite part and i'm like obviously when the puck went in the net that was my favorite part that was amazing when you did that so um that's mom island it's it's just a a lot of recapping and um there's a lot of judginess for the moms on the other team as well. Oh, I'm good. not yeah. going to, I'm not going to spare anything here. I, there's, you know, a lot of um, like, did you hear that one mom? And she needs to settle down and all that like that. How about a tire of other moms? Are you allowed to comment on what they're wearing? Oh, 100%. Like all, and like me being the, the I, I, I just love the pettiness, the pettier, the better. That's just my motto. I I like to reduce, like, did you see bedazzled jean jacket over there? Like, she needs to be quiet. Like, you reduce someone to an article of clothing, and that's, you know, hey, sunglasses, pipe down, you know, something like that. Like, you really, but I like the petty. Um, it's part of the reason I I contribute. So, um, but the yeah, hate, goalie the parents. Flow through you, Kelly. Right. I, I love it. Like, that's, I, I come for that. It's not, um... I don't shy away from it. I'm like, I'm here for this. And some teams really tee it up really nice. You're like, some parents are super nice and very reasonable, and that's not much fun. But when you get the ones that, um, like, the comments start floating back and forth, like, passive aggressively, those are my favorite. I really enjoy that. It's uh, it's uh, it's like a parent enjoyment thing. So, but yeah, goalie parents do. They tend they tend to move. But I think now, granted. I don't hear as much goalie criticism. I think people have gotten better in that sense where they kind of like um, don't put all the blame on the goalie all the time, like realizing like, yeah, well, my kid didn't help a lot with that. So, but I used to remember, so I have two brother-in-laws that were goalies and um, we, my one brother-in-law Casey played for Sioux Falls Stampede and I remember going to his games and sitting with my mother-in-law and she would have to move because people were brutal <laughs> I mean and he was a fabulous goaltender but Moreland you suck you're terrible you take your pads and get him off the ice he's terrible and I'm like oh my god like this is like I and she's sitting here listening to people say this about her child you know I mean it uh so I think sometimes goalie parents just have to move for their own sanity, you know. But okay, what's the worst thing you've ever yelled at a goalie entire lifetime? Not as a parent. You gotta go back it back into the high school hockey watching, college hockey watching. What is the worst thing or chant you've ever said to a goalie and got it going? Oh, I see. I was a cheerleader, so I couldn't start any of the inappropriate cheers, but I did enjoy when someone else started them. And we actually, Central got in trouble, but everybody did it. 
Um, they, they did the winning side, losing side cheer. I don't know that kids still do that one, but that was a really, um, that was a really good one that got taken away actually, because it was deemed unsportsmanlike. I thought it was just a good level of petty. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we used to, we used to gear for the goalie, you know, the, and especially when they'd be down on your end and you got their full ear shot, yeah. it got a little mean. It did get a little mean. But it's Kyle, part of the position. Kyle, bring it darker. You had to start <laughs> something worse. Bring it dark. I did. I did. But it's going to sound like the Pornhub comment section. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not going to say it. Oh. Well, this is karma, too, coming around for Kyle because uh, he's got two goalie kids. Yeah. And so all those moments of goaltender abuse, this is coming yeah. full circle. I would, and I didn't pick on it. It was just, just one time that I can think of, but usually like I would read like a HR person's worst nightmare, the stuff I would say, but um, <laughs> yeah. the I, one time I, I gave it to a goalie, it was probably crossed the line. Yeah. Okay. Can you give us one that's horrible, but still uh, allowable for this podcast? Cause I've got mine in the back of my head and I'm going to say it. And Do it. We, we might have to edit this one out. <laughs> it's no swearing involved. But it, it, the, the the graphic image in your head was gonna, and I did get the entire crowd around me to chant it at the goalie. So Kyle, you first. Give us something. Uh, Unless you got nothing, that's fine too. I'll be directed at my own. For fuck's sake, why am I paying for lessons? <laughs> uh, our the third person on the broadcast that Corey oh, and told me maybe maybe to dial it back. That's a parent. That's a common parent thought, though. Uh, One time, a shit I'm game. Pretty quiet. And thinking, what? Why do I spend the money that I do so we can come and that's watch amazing. this? Yeah, and I think in this, in, in my defense, very technical position, something that was yeah. just worked on, mentioned, watched on video, and they just do the exact same thing, and it's like, if you're looking for consistency consistency in children you probably have never parented <laughs> the only consistent thing i can count on is my son will run his head into the boards probably with no one there <laughs> but here we go kyle uh when I, we were i was in college in the old ralph where uh pre-gaming was very very common because you couldn't have alcohol in the student sections um and we were playing alaska anchorage and their goalie's name was Nemenko. And I used to sit in the pit crew section. So if you ever went to the old Ralph games, there was a section of people wearing black jerseys with the old Indian head logo or Native American head logo, uh, which were called the pit. And the pit was still holds the record for the only se entire section to be kicked out of a hockey game. Um, and in that particular hockey game, I got the bright idea to stand up when it was very quiet in the rink and say, the goalie's name was Nemenko. Nemenko wears a butt plug. And I got the entire section to start <laughs> chanting that repetitively. <laughs> and we were escorted out of the building. Uh, I don't know where it came from. It was a spur of the moment decision, but that listen, is the worst thing I've ever said to a goalie. <laughs> inspiration comes from all sorts of places, you know? I mean, sometimes when God whispers in your ear, you just have to, uh, you got to take what he gives you. That's fantastic. A different cat. <laughs> I just love that it caught on that other people were like, yeah, let's, like, let's like do a great this. idea. I will he, tell he you. Does. That he does. He does wear a butt plug. Very poorly in that, that day. And he continued <laughs> to. And wherever you are, I, Mr. Nemenko, I hope uh I hope that I hope he done. remembers. I just <laughs> hope that's what I hope. That's my hope. That I hope that that, that guy's like, Do you know how time we're playing at UND? And they started like, what the hell do you think that even meant? Yeah. <laughs> And for, for the for the full visual picture on that specific evening, uh, the uh, group of gentlemen that I'm hanging out with were having a casino night later. So we were all wearing full suits and baseball hats. I don't know why baseball hats, <laughs> but full suits, baseball hats, 20 year old chanting that. Hey. Let it all just draw that picture in your head. <laughs> so kind of the stage was set for you guys to be removed from this place. Like it wasn't yeah. probably. <laughs> Yeah, you I, walked in and security was like, God damn it. <laughs> and, and no rowdiness as we were booted. Everyone just kind of tacitly accepted it. Like, yeah. 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 Off the line. Hey, sure. Sure. Yeah. Textbook example of they were asking for it. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, if, if there was ever an embellishment penalty, we drew it that day. Yeah, I get you. Um, Sorry, I've, once as usual, I've totally railroaded all of Kyle's great comments for whatever the heck I uh, want to talk about. Hey, that, that's the whole point of this. You know what I mean? Because as someone alluded to, sometimes God whispers butt plug and you got to go with it, right? You have to. You have to. And you just take you take inspiration where it comes. And you know what? But not butt plugs, Kelly. I bet it hurt his feelings. <laughs> I just the comment or the other thing? You know, just all of the above that everyone was chanting it, that you brought it up. I mean, I bet it worked. First yeah. question for Mr. Moreland when he comes on. Did you know your wife thinks that when God whispers blood, she's <laughs> just go Well, what, you know, that's where inspiration comes, right? You know, it, um, it's just sometimes, sometimes you just hear a little whisper, you know? I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, they it, just asked could, me to leave the podcast. Could it? Could it be the demons? Yeah, but maybe it isn't, you know? Um, what else you got I, on the list to talk about tonight, Kyle? I told you, I the pettier, the better. I, I'm here for it. I think it's fun. I don't, uh, I, you know, we're not at a tennis match. Yeah. So, we're really uh, not. I was going to get into Minot Moms, but at some point I thought I'd have a Minot person on the podcast. <laughs> just to do it. North Dakota After Dark. Yeah. Ask them how. Uh-huh. We need an outsider's perspective on what they think of us. I mean, let's be real honest. We're three podcasts in. I can't believe anybody but uh, Kelly's relatives have actually listened to this stuff. (laughs) And so no one's catching the Von Dutch jokes at all because they're like, three podcasts of this crap? That's a lot to listen through. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, in about two weeks, I'll be back in Saskatchewan. I'm going to bring a Von Dutch hat home. Do it. I'm going to wear it. Do it. If you can also find a juicy couture track suit then that's kind of like winning a treasure hunt I do. um and or an ed hardy t-shirt and or i i will accept either either will fit the bill because i believe that's what that person i saw crossing the street in winnipeg um they had all of the above on and okay. it was how about this i know kyle we've been talking about a potential live podcast kyle um yeah. would you accept this for branded attire I'm going to wear a cutoff 1994 Class B North Dakota State Football Champions <laughs> t-shirt that barely has any fabric left on it, to be real honest. It's and, real sheer. Yeah, yeah. I feel, and, and then a trucker hat. I, I don't know if I can run down a Von Dutch trucker hat, but it it, it feels right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, why not? Because I'm really pushing the sin bin to have us do a, a live one. Uh, I think you'd fit right in. I feel like we can get really after dark in the sin bit. Yeah. We'll do it at the machines, Kelly. You can play. Right. You You guys, I'll be in the back. I'll chime in. Um, Maybe a little, depending on if I'm winning or losing. Yeah. You know, that day, but that nobody can predict that. So I think our guest should be Sean Andrews. So he can yell final, final while wearing (laughs) the final, final shirt. Where do we land on making that hat that says Keith for our, our favorite friend? Uh, I've got a guy that'll do it for 20 bucks. I'll pay that 20 bucks. <laughs> I know Call in. I'm committing live on the podcast. That hat needs to be made. We need to have him on. He needs to wear that. The, uh, just, just to, uh, just to close the circle here, the, uh, the gentleman that's going to be wearing the teeth hat, uh, I, during a Minot broadcast, I received my first ever text from his wife, uh, something about blank those blanks talking about, uh, Minot mom. So. Hell yeah. It was succinct and right to the point and very on brand. But God, it's fun. You know, yeah. I mean, that's just the thing is that those games, while, while emotion evoking, that's fun. I don't, I don't care yeah. who we are. It is fun. Titans it's better than a quiet game. Listen, if you're driving the kids around four or five nights a week, nights, mornings a week, you got to have a little fun. Oh, not yes. in hotel lobbies or sneaking away from the kids. Right, Corey? exactly just don't just you know if you're going to make fun of my not don't get up by uh three or four goals on them with three minutes left in the state uh double a finals and blow that lead because it really lends into them being who they are or be the the parent that always has the child that gets stomach flu and um have to go home so that you we uh what did we lose by like one on that game i'm still and losing your one c that. doesn't really hurt in those games kelly so yeah <laughs> Well, I should have made my kid play while throwing up. I should have done it. It was, again, we talked about coddling. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah. I'm, hey, I should. I should. Rip. I should something to do with him. something that you should take care of your kid over. He should work it out on the bench. <laughs> we'll you get know? you a bucket. Yeah. Knock it off. Hey, you have a garbage can in there. Yeah. It would have oh. been a stroke of geographic luck. If you would have been on the other team, you would have been playing, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you, if you're going to throw up puke on their best player, that's what I always say. That's right. Then all the kids of mine are going to have stomach flu too. So... Yeah, I don't know. It uh, that I'm still I I'm I'm ready for a rematch this next season because uh, that one's time. that one's gonna haunt me. Yeah. So um, I'm getting a call here from Josh Jamel, who's a little upset about all the Minot talk. Um, I think that we should do. Delicious. Oof. <laughs> Josh Jamel. Doesn't hey doesn't know Von Dutch, but can pull that one out of his hat. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> hey, he's like he's like all we have in North Dakota, and actually, funny enough. When he was marrying Fergie, I was reading a magazine article about them getting married, and they referred to him as Josh Jamel from Minot, Minnesota. So we even were stripped of that. Inexcusable. Yeah, yeah but isn't Minot, Minnesota really? I mean, <laughs> I just, it was hurtful. It hurt for a lot. I'm like, can't we have anything? Uh, I, cl closing question based on the time of year and trying to bring it back to hockey. What would be an acceptable return to you were we to trade Minot to Minnesota? Kelly? No, no, you can't trade mm. it to Kelly. No. So we get a we get a we get a Minnesota team. We get something from Minnesota. Ooh. Oh, okay. Well, well you get, so you gotta say what we're we're getting and what we're giving. We're dealing, we are dealing the incorporated city of Minot. Okay. And we get or something back from Minnesota. Minnesota. This isn't a player to be named later situation. We're, call, we're calling their governor. Okay. Must and saying, hey, my not's on the table. What's your offer? No, but it's hard because the like the, most of the teams in Minnesota, like there's a reason like that you hate them. Like Warroad's great, but God, I hate Warroad hockey. You know what I mean? Like it uh so but like it doesn't have to be a team. Just use your imagination. We could trade it, trade it, my not for for Dan Fabian, for example. Okay. Okay, well then, I'm going to take I'm going to take the Minnesota State Fair. I'm going to take that oh. because their state fair is pretty awesome. So if it doesn't have to be hockey related, because like I said, that's hard because it's that love hate, like you know. It, but I'll I'll I would take their state fair because they they do knock that out of the park. So Kelly, I love your take. Like that's a great trade, but one <laughs> no one's making for my life. like like no. I mean, great you you. Stole one like from them. Hard so, no, pass. No. So. Here's what we're getting for Minot. <laughs> you know that stupid ass spoon statue they have in Minneapolis? That's what they're trading for Minot. A spoon statue. Hey, take it or leave it. <laughs> and honestly, and shit, we'll take it. We're still getting the upside on that. <laughs> shit, yeah, we'll take it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, spoon statue. We're, literally we're disappointed right where really Minot insane. was. And people are like, this is way better. <laughs> this is better. You didn't say uh, you trade my not for Mystic Lake. Ooh, yes, I would. I, I love, and you know what? I'm going to go even further than that. I want the hockey arena next to Mystic Lake. I want that because we don't have that. We have nothing to offer. Like, I love that, like, there I can, while my kid's doing warm-ups, I can go play slot machines and then slink back in in the first period and pretend like I didn't miss anything. So I want that Dakota rink and Mystic Lake. I want that combo in exchange for my not again, not a trade anyone would make. But yeah. So would you say you're gambling wanna... that your son doesn't notice you're gone? Right. Well, I mean, I'm. Yeah, it, it's and like he does notice I'm gone, but I like to pretend like he doesn't. Where I'm like, great job, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Mom loves you. Bad you should feel bad. <laughs> Not that bad. I haven't felt bad yet, so I don't know. I mean, maybe it's coming. I don't know. Uh, I trade uh, my not for the Eden Prairie Shields, and I think that's a fair deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, you yeah, guys, I'm Eden Prairie. You guys really think you have something? You guys are holding no cards in this negotiation, <laughs> like. Yeah, you're like We're talking my not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. And I realize that the Pull Tap Sports Network is in Minnesota. I don't see them as savvy dealers. I think we can. I think we can sell them. We'll sell high on Minot. 
what would they, what about my not? Are you going to dab, you know, dab out there saying this is why you want that? Name something good you could hook them that exists in my not. They used to have St. Paul, home of Sean William Scott. My not, home of the new Sean William Scott, Josh Demel. They can Josh upgrade. Uh, so Josh Demel is what we're selling here. Is what you're saying? I don't know if you caught that movie you just made with Jennifer Lopez, uh, but I did not. <laughs> was terrible. No, yeah. I was going to say. I bet you didn't because yeah, no one. I'm a did. man. <laughs> I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, I was gonna say we could trade the entire Iron Range because I'm sure Minnesota cares not about that. But that <laughs> would just make me tell you a really funny story about softball uh, against the Iron Range players, and that's probably an episode four story. I'll say <laughs> that. So remind four. me, Kyle, playing an Iron Range softball team. If I haven't told that yet in the podcast. Okay, so here's the deal. I am so professional, I'm now keeping notes and doing show prep. So I just made a note. Episode four, Iron Range. Yeah, best wow. chirp of my life. That's that's the story right there. Never, I've told you the best thing said to a goalie, okay. which is my, we're going to talk about hockey chirps next week, right? So okay. granted, it wasn't hockey because I can't play hockey. I can't even skate, but best chirp I ever had in my life. If that <laughs> chirp is butt plug related, you're going to be official beat to the <laughs> It is not a plug related, but I will try to think of no. <laughs> I will not ask related. every guest on this podcast a question about butt plugs. <laughs> yeah. So, so it sounds like we need plugs. a yeah, we need a two for one hat deal. We need one that's <laughs> teeth. and one that's got a, a an image of a butt plug with a thumbs up. Just work it into the conversation. Work it right into the conversation. You oh, could actually just do a, a thumb shaped. <laughs> Twice. Where did we go wrong tonight? Guys? Could no, yeah, be sorry. a sponsor. Could be a potential sponsorship opportunity. You don't know. I mean, romantics could probably use the, the reach out. They really could. They reach really around? could. But they're still. They're I still standing. On purpose. Did you know that's a chain? That is not a unique thing to North Dakota. I found that out while I was down in Omaha. There is a I was say, store. I think they're. Where were we at for hockey? I want to say, I want to say Minot that they have one job. I'm not, don't quote me, but I think it was Minot. Oh my Romantics, gosh. The adult store is an official chain, guys. It is not a Grand Forks only. Right. Man, well, I feel real hey, pleased to have learned that today. Hit us up for sponsorship, Romantics. Yeah. I will, abs- I, I love a free t-shirt. Okay, and I'll wear okay it. so final, final closing thought. What is your best tagline for Romantics? Ah, romantics. We're 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 a chain, and we have them too. <laughs> romantics, warm, warm smiles, sticky floors. <laughs> I also have a, Kyle. I also have a story about the mop boy from Romantics because I had a friend who worked there doing that job, but I won't tell that one till later. <laughs> episode <either>. five, sorry, <laughs> episode five. Kyle, your tagline. We bought you some Romantics, time. we put the reach and reach around. <laughs> because they're a chain, get it? Like they. Right. No. I don't need to explain to you, Kelly. That's good. No, you don't. It's, uh, I, like I said, way ahead, way ahead of you. I love you it. Know, that could, yeah, you know, there's I'm another really, one. I'm really looking forward to Mr. Moreland being on this broadcast. <laughs> this podcast, I always make him so proud. I, I Never, never embarrass him. That's a really <laughs> fun thing about our marriage. You're Kelly, with your Kelly. hand, using your hand of what the brim of his hat would look like, how far will he pull it down? Uh, pretty far. I mean, and it's always curved majorly because he doesn't straight brims. He's 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 against that. He's yeah, a, he's a millennial. He doesn't get with the times, but he, he does slowly. The, the embarrassment factor creeps up, but um, I, he knows who he married. I, uh, Kelly Moreland, my favorite Moreland. I just, I'm sorry, Matt. I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, learn how to conduct a poll. We'll do that uh, on one of our few social media places. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, guys, hey, that was great. That was uh, a solid 64 minutes. Something <laughs> I've never heard. Um, <laughs> if, episode three in the books. If anyone makes it this far, they, they should appreciate that joke. Kyle just dropped the let, Let's hope so. Let's hope so. I say the best for last. Also something I've never heard. Uh, <laughs> thank you to Corey. Thank you to Kelly. Thank you to Pull Tab uh, Sports. This is North Dakota After Dark. We'll talk to you next week. 
All right. Good night, guys. Nice.